Hey everyone, uh, before we get into this, uh, we just announced our winner of the $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card giveaway. Head to the community tab uh, to find out. Also, I emailed the winner, so they literally already have the code right now. So if it's not in your inbox, you didn't win. But that's okay, we're giving away another uh, big giveaway for the month of March here. Uh, we're giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch eShop gift cards or PlayStation gift cards or Xbox gift cards. It'll be up to the user to decide who wins. That's right, we're gonna have three winners this month. That's three chances to win. Whew. Man, I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, head down to the description or the pinned comment uh, to find the entry form to enter. Uh, you do have to put your email in. That guarantees I can get a hold of you. And then there'll be a bunch of additional ways to enter. Subscribe to the channel. A whole bunch of other stuff. So thank you guys so much. All right, let's get into this. It's kind of sad news. So... Nintendo uh, warned us about this last year. When they did all the big announcements for the 35th anniversary of Mario, they said there were a couple games in particular that were just going to stop being sold as of March 31st. Uh, Mario 35 really wasn't a game that was sold, but it's available on the Nintendo Switch Online service. It's really, really fun. Seems to be based on the original concept of Tetris 99, and Nintendo's just ending it for seemingly no reason. Now, technically... Just because they're removing it from the service doesn't mean the game's going to go away for sure. Uh, what happened with Tetris 99 is while it's available on the service, you can actually buy a physical copy of it separate uh, from the actual things. You don't need the online service technically to play Tetris 99. Uh, it's just a way to get it without having to buy it separately. It's possible Mario 35 might end up being sold separately in the same fashion for 10 20 bucks at retail. I'm not sure. Nintendo hasn't promised us that. That's maybe a hope. But should we have that hope considering that Nintendo put out a tweet uh, reminding everyone, this tweet's in Japan right now, but I'm sure it's, it'll circulate around as the month goes on, uh, that, hey, look, you want to get Super Mario 3D All-Stars physically or digitally? Better do it now because as of March 31st, they are done selling it. Now, they're done printing copies. They will be printing Super Mario 3D All-Stars physical copies all the way through March 31st. Digital copies will be sold all the way through March 31st. As of April 1st, you will no longer be able to buy a digital copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and they are no longer making physical copies. So whatever physical copies they get shipped out, yes, there will still be a shipment arriving that first week to retailers. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the 35th anniversary of Mario, and Nintendo's ending it in what many people feel is a really dumb way in removing content. Uh, we've had temporary content before. Uh, I talked about this last year, actually, uh, when they were just removing that jump rope game they made during the pandemic and handed it out to free. And for some reason, they announced when it, they released it, this is going to be a limited time thing. And then they stuck by their guns and it became a limited time thing. And I, I really didn't like it. And I've really hated this practice from Nintendo in general, because what they're saying is, Hey, we're making some cool content, but, uh, too bad. So, Jump Rope Challenge, goodbye. Super Mario 35, goodbye. Super Mario 3D All-Stars, hey, for all the controversy that people had over did they do enough and all, hey, it doesn't matter anymore. You can't buy it. Goodbye. Now, we've had plenty of time to buy it. I own a copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I'm sure if you are interested, you already own a copy as well. And people thought maybe Nintendo was playing some games, or maybe it was hope that Nintendo was playing games, that they would that they're doing this FOMO, aka fear of missing out. So Nintendo was doing this, not necessarily for Mario 35, because they don't really make any money off it. Maybe they just did that to push the online service, but because Nintendo wanted to push sales of, of 3D All-Stars, which we know the last reported sales for Super Mario 3D All-Stars crossed 8.3 million in sales. And by the time we hit the end of this month, it probably is going to cross 10 million in sales. But the thing is, it's weird to think that we have this top-selling, top 10 best-selling Switch game, a 10 million plus seller, which I don't even know how long 10 million plus is going to be a top 10 selling game on Switch anymore. Crazy game sales. But we have this top 10 selling game, and Nintendo's just saying we're not going to sell it anymore. It's like they're... It's, uh, Nintendo's titles are so evergreen. It feels weird that they just want to kind of leave future money on the table. But 
that's a choice Nintendo's making, and probably because they feel like we're not leaving money on the table, we're going to replace the sales of this with something from Zelda. Some sort of limited time deal with 35th anniversary for Zelda. One of the biggest fears, obviously, as a Zelda fan is limited time offers, uh, or limited, like, a, say there's a Zelda 35 that exists, or like, a limited time of way to play what is probably going to end up being a lot of fun. Mario 35 is a blast it kind of sucks that it's just going to kind of vanish and you're not going to be able to play it anymore unless they decide to sell it separately later, which I know some people feel like that's what they're going to do with Mario 3D All-Stars. That's the pack. Later, they'll split up the games and sell them individually for 30 40 50 60 bucks each because Nintendo does stuff like that sometimes. Or they could just make you miss 3D All-Stars for a year, kind of like they did with the NES Classic, and then bring it back for sale. Again, boosting sales at that time as it'll be like, oh, we're bringing it back temporarily for one month. Again, it's an interesting sales strategy, and clearly it's working, and Nintendo's making a lot of money, but I, it's also not something that you would, I, like, it's not really pro-consumer, it's pro-business in a way, but maybe not, because could they get more sales if they would just have it be around all the time? I don't know, but... This is what Nintendo's doing, and of course they reminded us it's coming to an end. They reminded us that Jump Rope Challenge was coming to an end last year as well, and I similarly criticized Nintendo back then. People kind of have this thought process that because I am passionate about Nintendo and really gaming on the whole, I mean, I the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Switch, P gaming PC, it doesn't matter. I game on everything. I, I just, I feel like, People perceive because my channel name is Nintendo Prime and because I get really excited for a lot of Nintendo games that I won't criticize Nintendo. And I feel like if you feel that way, you really haven't been watching this channel very long. In fact, I'm probably more critical of Nintendo than any other company out there because I have such high expectations from a company that I'm so passionate about. Whereas with Sony, it might feel like I'm a little critical, but I mean, I'm not really critical of their game decisions because I haven't really played them yet. Anyways, I'm really curious what you guys think about all of this and, and what's happening with Nintendo, what's happening in general uh, with this 35th anniversary, your fears for what they might do for Mario's 35th. We also have Metroid's 35th. What if they try to boost Metroid sales by saying, here's Metroid Prime Trilogy HT, 60 bucks, but it's only available for six months. Buy it now and you'll never see it again. What if they did that? Would you be okay? I mean, yeah, we want it to come out, but would you be okay if they just made it this limited time thing? And the thing is, you're going to buy it. If you want it, you're going to... I'm not telling you not to buy it. Not to take advantage of the fact it's there, because reality is, even if there wasn't a fear of missing out, many of us would have picked up 3D All-Stars anyways at launch. Many of us would have picked up a Metroid Prime Trilogy at launch, or whatever they decided to do for Donkey Kong. Maybe they do a Donkey Kong Country Collectors thing. We, we've talked in the past about, oh, maybe they'll... They'll do like a Donkey Kong 40 because it's 40th anniversary of Donkey Kong this year. And hey, um, the way they did you know, Mario 35 works even better for Donkey Kong, which is a game that was built around this kind of competitive speedrunning. So that could be a lot of fun. But also, um, by the way, Donkey Kong got super popular with the Country series. What about a Country Collection? There's a lot of possibilities out there, but what if Nintendo repeats that fear of missing out mantra? I, I, the, the number one thing I hate are games available only for a temporary amount of time. Technically, all games are only available for a temporary amount of time, but at least most games are available for the lifetime of a platform. Nintendo has done this before. You guys remember Xenoblade Chronicles back in the Wii days? Remember the OG release of Xenoblade Chronicles when they finally brought it west? and they only did it through GameStop, and they only did limited runs? That's kind of like here, except we know when the runs end. I'm not sure I like this. I'm not sure that I want Nintendo to repeat this. Yeah, I'm going to keep buying the games if I want to play them, if it's a collection I want to play, or if it's a game I want to play, but that's just because I would have bought the game anyways. Not because Nintendo's making me feel like I need to buy it now. It's I was going to buy it. I was always going to get Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Nothing else. I just want those three games in HD, even if I don't end up beating them. It's nice to know that when I do get the itch to play Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, or Mario Galaxy, even for small snippets, then I get to play a better looking version of it. That was worth the money to me. I just, I want Nintendo to kind of rethink these practices. Uh, I don't know how consumers are going to react because clearly Switch is selling like gangbusters. Everything they release is selling like gangbusters. I'm sure Bravely Default 2 is going to end up being the best-selling game in the Bravely Default series, which I think is three games now. Uh, and 
despite it being called two. Pretty sure there's three Bravely Default games. Uh, and yeah, I'm sure it might even not sell Octopath Traveler, which is made by the same team. And heck, you know, when Monster Hunter Rise releases later this year, I expect it to become quickly the best-selling Monster Hunter game ever released on a Nintendo platform, and maybe the second best-selling Monster Hunter game ever behind World, which is on, obviously, the competitor's platform. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Uh, we had, obviously, a lot of people were not liking this back then. We're being reminded today by Nintendo on March 1st that, hey, you have, like, 30 days left. Good luck. Uh, and you know what else you have 30 days left on? To win a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox $20 gift cards. Uh, so enter down in the description below. Uh, I like to do these monthly giveaways. We'll see how well this one goes. Uh, I have no idea what I'm actually going to do for April at this point. I mean, maybe. I think Kenna, a game I'm really excited for for PlayStation 5, uh, comes out that month. I'm not sure about giving away a game that I'm most excited for on like PlayStation 5, although I think it's coming to PlayStation 4. So maybe, I don't know. I, like, I, I just feel bad because PlayStation 5 isn't so widely available, whereas Switch is. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe I'd end up doing another $99 card then. We'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one.